everyone, my name is Abhishek Chen and welcome back to the part 2 of a Docker module of a Python programming language that help us to automate our day-to-day -day operations with the Docker containers. Before continuing with this video, I would highly recommend you to watch part 1 and I have provided a link in the description below for the part 1. So let's quickly jump into the demo part and this is the code which we have written in the last part where we have seen how we can just run the container for the postgres okay so let me just quickly check because i have cleared up a lot of stuff there is no container running so let me just run this container and then i'm just gonna explain uh, how this code is working because in the last part I haven't explained this in a great detail. So now we have this Postgres up and running. Okay, so here what I have to do to run any container, the very first thing which I have to provide to the so basically, first we have to create the client object. Okay, that is actually just returning an object which has bunch of you know the functions, bunch of classes, and then each class has bunch of functions. So in last part we have seen uh, images and then we have containers and inside the containers we have this function run and just to execute this function we have to provide image which is the mandatory field and rest of the fields are optional but since it's a postgres so to distinguish different different containers because i'm gonna have a multiple postgres container so i'm just giving a name you can see second period variable and then we have this environment environment is you know just to set any environmental variable uh, postgres required that so here i'm just setting up the postgres password then this detach is just to dictate that you want to run this container in a background not in an interactive mode okay so now comes to the real time use cases i want you know the multiple version of postgres running as a container so to have that what i can do is i can use a docker compose that's fine but if i wanted to do with docker module then how i'm gonna do it so i'm just gonna iterate through for images and let me just quickly check what all images i am currently having for postgres so i'm just gonna do list of the images i have docker latest 10 and 10 and 10 right so what i'm gonna do just going to copy this put it here and then I have 10 and then I have 10 alpine I can use any tag but since it's already there so it won't take much time okay so this is what I'm gonna do and now I'm just gonna replace this image with image variable and for this name what i'm going to do is i'm just going to use this name and i can give name some name like uh, post us instance and then the counter and here i can have this counter plus one and here i can just define this counter as zero Okay, so let's see what happens. Uh, the only thing which I have to do is, I have, okay, I've already changed it. I'm just gonna keep all the Postgres password same and I wanted to run all the all of them in the background, right? So that is true. So let me run this. <coughs> Come back here. Okay, so now you can see we have instance one, we have instance two, we have instance three and that is what i'm expecting because before use creating this name i'm just adding this if i add here after this then this would be starting from from instance zero rather than one but this is not something you should be worried about but now you can see we have four different different uh, instances running for the postgres so now it's completely up to your imagination or your need what exactly you want to automate from the docker container perspective then you can use this stuff and this is just a real one real time use case where i wanted to have a different different version then i have to have a different different data and then i want to check some compatibility between those version to see how the data is being stored for different different version similarly you can automate any task whatsoever you are doing through the command line 
that's one thing now the other thing is uh just to verify the logs which is again a very important concept you know uh, which you have to do so frequently okay so how you can uh, get or get a hold on the logs of every container right so let me just copy this one more time so right now we know that we have four containers running right we can list them down by just doing this okay now we get you know this container object for each container right so once we have that the next thing which we can do is we can extract the log for container this is this then we can have I guess it should give me the logs. Okay, seems like it is giving me a logs. Yes, let me list off some of the container here. I'm just gonna use the desktop UI to stop the container so I can see. I'm just getting a log uh, for one CLS. Okay. So I can see this now. I'm just getting the mess logs for one container. Uh, I just stopped that, and why I'm just getting it's still all the all the containers because this all equals to true. Let me just remove that and run this one more time. Okay, now I am just getting uh, log messages. So whatever the logs are being captured by this container, I can see this. And this is very helpful, right? Especially when you are uh, doing automation for testing, because in testing a different different releases, you want to see how you know the logging has been changed from one version to second, because that's the only way through which you can understand more precisely what has been changed at the code level. Sometimes what happens is developers cannot you know provide all the information related to the changes. But if you have a very solid automation around log verification between versions, then you can easily find out by yourself by just seeing the messages, what has been changed, right? So that is how you can capture the logs. Okay. So in today's video, I just, I just covered how you can automate the real time scenario where you can want to have a different, different version running with the images <clears throat> and the one more thing uh, I know I'm just you know switching back to the docker run command one more time because there is a one point which I wanted to cover so whenever you want to have a different different version for postgres or any other database or any other application I would always recommend you to go to the docker hub and uh, find out for the proper documentation so for example postgres docker hub if you just go there you will see all the details which you are required you know to run the postgres right it has a lot of information like i mean what all environmental variable you want to use if you want to have if you want to persist the data you know uh, how you can do that what all things you have to set you know here you can see here we are just seeing not only environmental perspective not only setting up the postgres password but pg data as well to persist the data right uh, mm -hmm. so there are a bunch of information which would be required for you right and you can utilize that now okay so just a quick uh, recap what we have covered we have just seen how we can just run the container how we can extract the logs for the container and now for logging part once you have all the information uh, you can save that into the variable and then you can just manipulate that by your programmatical and logical skill whatever information you want you want to extract all the error messages you can search for that Right, and if you want to extract a specific string or the messages, let's say dev says that okay, in this build, if you are running this feature, this is the message you should see. You can capture these logs and you can search for that message, and if it is there, then your job is done. Uh, there is no need to manually verify that. You can just design the, or you can just write the code, and you can automate that task. Right. So there are a lot of stuffs which I wanted to cover, uh, but today I just wanted to cover only these two topics, like I mean how you can run the container and how you can extract the logs. That's it from my side for this particular video. Uh, 